Hi everyone, and welcome to a Tech Talk video from Eric's Electronics Workbench. So every so often, I'll post a short video that just covers a single topic. And those topic ideas might come from something that I'm working on at the workbench, or they just might be random topics that I think would be useful for anyone that has an interest in electronics. And if I see previous videos that I've posted that have a lot of questions about something in particular, I'll certainly cover those as well. And if there's a topic that you'd like to see me you know, answer and discuss, well, go ahead and leave that in the comment section because I certainly read all of the comments. So I'll try and cover various questions that are posted as well. So in this Tech Talk video, let's take a look at phantom voltages or ghost voltages. So if you're not familiar with that term, I'll explain what that is. And let's take a look and see how exactly do you distinguish an actual voltage from a phantom voltage. So we'll cover all of that in just a moment. So let's go over to the AC outlets that are on the bench and get started. Okay, here we are at some of the workbench outlets. So here in North America, these are standard 120 volt outlets. Now, these are actually 20 amp outlets because they have this horizontal slot off on the side. If they were 15 amp outlets, they just don't have that horizontal slot. But nonetheless, these are wired with the standard three wire configuration. So the slot on the right is the hot, the left is the neutral, and this little socket right here is earth ground. Now these are mounted in a metal box, and that metal box is also at earth ground potential. It's tied to this earth ground right here. Now down here, these are all my isolation transformers. So uh, there's one transformer on this group and another transformer on this group. The only difference is this is a smaller VA rating transformer. It's not turned on right now, so we'll just use this side over here. All right. Now they're an orange colored outlet because these are isolated ground outlets meaning that this little ground socket right here is electrically not connected to the mounting bracket that's part of the uh, outlet assembly. So in turn, there's no electrical connection automatically made between this socket and then this box. Now, in this installation, this metal box is not connected to anything, all right? It's completely isolated. It's just mounted to this plywood uh, board back here. So it's completely isolated from everything else, in no way connected to anything. And that's very important with an isolation transformer because on an isolation transformer you want complete isolation from a ground reference. And there are certain types of testing that isolation transformers are used for that keep the technician safe when you're uh, doing troubleshooting and it protects you from severe electrical shock if there's a fault or a problem or a chassis that's electrically hot, instances like that. So. Again, you don't want a ground reference. So one side of the isolation transformer is uh, and secondary is connected to this side of the, uh, the outlet, the slot, and then the other side of the secondary is connected over to this slot, just that simple. So when I'm doing my testing, even down here, when I need to use a ground reference, and you'll see that in just a moment, I'll actually be using the ground reference on this box up here because, again, nothing electrically connected here. Now, it's important to have isolated ground outlets like this because if a fault ever occurred and a voltage appeared back on the ground wire and fed back in here from a piece of equipment that you were troubleshooting, you would not want this box to become electrically hot, all right? That could be a, a hazard or a problem. So this just isolates this box from this ground connection right there. Now, just to demonstrate that these outlets are in fact electrically live, I have my test bulb right here. Let's grab this and plug that in. All right, so see these all energized. Okay, down here, same thing. Isolation transformer is on. Okay. And in case you're wondering, this outlet right here is part of an AC power source. So that's a completely different piece of equipment. And I have my outlet tester. This will just confirm the wiring configuration. So if I plug that in there like so, you can see those two green lights are on. All right, and then this light is off. So if we take a look at the, what that means on this little chart. You can see two green lights, that's correct wiring. So no issues going on there. And if I plug it into the isolation transformer, you can see there's just one green light that turns on. All right, and if I take a look right here, you can see that one green light in the center just means that there is an open ground and that's exactly what we have. There is no ground connection. All right, so that makes sense. So if you're following along, you're absolutely doing so at your own risk. I'm not advising probing around in AC outlets because AC line voltage is absolutely lethal. So again, if you're doing any work, you're absolutely doing so at your own risk. So let me grab my Fluke 289, it's sitting right here, these test probes, and let's take a few voltage readings around here and see exactly what's going on, all right? So if I just probe into the outlet like so, you can see we have right there, 120 volts, exactly what you'd expect. If I keep from the neutral and I go to earth ground right here, nothing, 
and that's perfectly correct. And then if you go from the hot to earth ground, 120 volts, and that is correct. And that's of course where a shock hazard can exist because if you get between that hot connection and you are grounded by your feet on the floor and you go here, there you have a severe electrical shock. So that's where there's definitely a hazard, all right? Always keep that in mind. Now, if we come down here to the isolation transformer, let's take a look and see what we have here. Also, when you're uh, taking a voltage reading, it doesn't matter which way the probes go, all right? So, let's take a reading across here. That's on the secondary of the isolation transformer, 120 volts. No problems there, it looks perfectly normal. Now, up here, when I went from the uh, neutral to ground, we had no voltage reading. If I go from neutral here to ground, and remember, I can't use this box because there's nothing connected to it, so we go up here to earth ground. 62 volts. Well, that's actually known as a phantom voltage or a ghost voltage, okay? And we'll talk a little bit more about that in just a moment. If I go from the hot to earth ground, uh, 55 volts. Again, that's known as a ghost voltage, okay? So why does a ghost voltage or a phantom voltage appear? Well, the voltage is induced in the wiring for various reasons, such as parallel runs of wire in close proximity to each other, small leakage currents that can occur, a voltage that's induced from magnetic fields and transformers, and capacitive coupling effects of wiring and other devices. But no matter the cause, the ghost voltage source acts like an extremely high impedance supply. So it can generate that voltage, but it can supply virtually no current. All right, so that's very important to keep that in mind. So now the digital multimeter that I was using, that Fluke 289, in the standard AC volts mode has a very, very high impedance. It's over 10 mega ohms, and it doesn't really load the circuit enough to remove that ghost voltage, okay? So you might be asking, can you be shocked off of that ghost voltage that we were measuring? Well, usually not, but in some cases you might get a slight tingling sensation that might be noticed. So it is something to be aware of and to be cautious of, but you should not be receiving a severe electrical shock from a ghost voltage, all right? But again, you might have a slight tingling sensation. Now, you might be asking, how do you know if it's a ghost voltage or not? Because if you get between the AC line and ground, you will receive a severe electrical shock. But a ghost voltage, that's a different story. But how do you differentiate between these two voltages? Well, what you need to use is a digital multimeter with a low impedance mode, all right? And it's often marked as low Z or low Z on the meter. So a ghost voltage will disappear with a low impedance load connected to it. So remember that the source is acting like a very, very high impedance supply and it cannot provide much current. So the voltage collapses down when a low impedance is connected to it. So let's take a look at what a low impedance is. So if I grab my Fluke 289 right here and show you on the front panel, See it says low Z right there, all right, or low Z. So Z, of course, is the symbol for impedance, and that is the low impedance mode. So it takes the impedance of this uh, digital multimeter that was up in the uh, 10 mega ohm range or possibly higher than that, and it drops it way, way down into just in the thousands of ohms. And you can see conveniently it measures uh, volts AC and volts DC at the same time. It's a very nice feature. So now, if I take a voltage reading, we'll start up here where we had 120 volts before. And you can see it, top reading right there, 120 volts, 20 and a half, perfectly normal. And if I go from the hot to earth ground, it's still 120 volts, okay? It doesn't care that that's a lower impedance, all right? That's exactly what you'd expect. But let's take a look down here now where we had that ghost voltage. So we'll start with across the isolation transformer, just like before and 120 volts right there, perfectly normal. Again, the transformer, it's supplying power. It doesn't care that that's a low impedance. But now if we go to the neutral side, okay, and we go over to earth ground, nothing, absolutely nothing. Notice the top line, zero volts, okay? And if I move this over to the other side, zero volts. Doesn't matter if I reverse the test leads like so. Tenth of a volt fluctuates, now it's at zero. Go over to the other side, zero volts, okay? And if I just go back like so, and right there, there's that ghost voltage again. 
So really simple as that. When you see that change and it goes from the uh, voltage reading and then it disappears on the low impedance mode, you know that that reading that you were getting was in fact a ghost voltage. So when you're taking a reading for a ghost voltage and you get the readings like you just saw, you really should verify that with a second multimeter just to verify that there was no issue going on with the meter that you used and that the results were in fact accurate. So let me grab my other digital multimeter here. So you can see here, a Fluke 117, and it has the load impedance mode right there, okay? So we'll set this over here, and we'll take the same reading, the light turned on so you can see the display. And if we go right here to there and up here, you can see it says about 0.3 volts, so no issues there. That would be 300 millivolts, so negligible. And if we go to this other side right here, it's also saying about 0.3, so in agreement with the other meter that there's really no voltage there at all when you put the lower impedance on it. If I go down here like so, you can see it says 120, so the readings match with the, uh, the other meter. Okay, so always good to use a second meter just to verify that the readings remain the same between the two, and then you can be assured that that was in fact a ghost voltage. All right, let me grab my Simpson 270 meter. It's on the shelf here. So we'll be using the 500 volt range down to the two and a half volt range. And we'll set this over to AC volts. So you can see the impedance on AC is 5,000 ohms per volt. And on AC, this red scale right here, the lower red scale is for the two and a half volts. And then the other ranges are red on this upper red scale, but you're using the numbers that are written in black, okay? So just set this down over here. So what that 5,000 ohms per volt means is that the impedance of the meter can be figured out by multiplying the voltage that you're on right here. So example is 500 volts. Multiply that by 5,000, you get 2.5 mega ohms. So when this is on 500 volts, this meter looks like a two and a half mega ohm resistor. So it's like a two and a half mega ohm resistor connected across the voltage source. So we know what the ghost voltage that voltage falls away when it has a low impedance connected to it. These uh, various ranges have different impedances. So on 500 volts, two and a half mega ohms, but on 250 volts, it's uh, 1.25 mega ohms. 50 volts is 250 K ohms. 10 volts is 50 K ohms and two and a half volts is 12.5 K ohms. So it varies quite a bit. Now compare that to the Fluke digital multimeters we were using those were over 10 mega ohms, all right? So those have a much, much higher impedance. And on the low impedance mode of those meters, they drop down below where this meter stops at 12.5 uh, K ohms. Uh, those Fluke digital multimeters go lower than that for their low impedance mode. So with this meter, I expect the ghost voltage to still remain. It should be something that we can measure on all the ranges, but it should vary. So let's see if that actually happens. So first of all, I'll just take a voltage reading right here across the isolation transformer, if those stay in there, yep. So this is just the uh, reading off of the transformer. So we're on 500 volts right there. So 500 volts, 400, 300, 200, that'd be 100, and then 10 and 20, so 120 volts. So that makes sense, that's exactly what we have. So if I change the range here to 250, you can see 250, 200, 150, 100, and then those are five volt increments. So you'd have 100 and then five, 10, 15, and 20. So again, makes sense. Now, I set this down here. Let's go back to 500 volts, and I'll take this, I'll leave this on the isolation transformer, but I'll go up here to this uh, earth ground connection. There's a hole right there, you can just poke that in there. And we do have a reading. All right, so again, we're on one probe is on the isolation transformer, other probe is up there on earth ground. And you can see right here, 500 volts. And we have a reading down here. So 500 volts, that would be, where are we at here? Uh, 500, 4, 3, 200, 100, and we're about halfway. So just roughly saying that would be about 50 volts, okay? So if I drop this down to 250, Again, changing nothing else over there. 250 volts, 
we have 250, 200, 150, 100, and 50. So it's just a little bit under, okay? Now knowing that's about 50 volts that we're getting right there, if I change this to 50 volts, it doesn't peg the meter all the way over. On 50 volts, of course, that's 50 volts would be full scale, but it didn't go full scale, okay? And so on 50 volts, we are 50, 40, 30, 20. That'd be, of course, 25 right there. And we're under the halfway mark. So again, you can see the effect of the impedance. As the impedance is going lower and lower on this, it's loading that circuit down, and that ghost voltage is falling away, exactly what we expect to happen, OK? So now, if we're just a little bit under 25 volts right there. If I go to 10 volts, look at that. 10 volts would be full scale, but it didn't go anywhere near that. It's still about halfway, and we know, you know halfway would be about 5 volts. And if I go to 2.5 volts, is it going to peg the meter? Nope. 2.5 volts, 2.5, 2, 1.5, two, and, and then a little bit under 1.5. So it varied quite a bit when you go down here to 500 volts, and you're getting something over here that indicates a fair amount of voltage, and then you can drop this down to two and a half volts, and the voltage changes you know, drastically. So you can see that the uh, ghost voltage basically is falling away as the impedance of this meter is going lower and lower, and again, two and a half volts, we're 12.5 uh, K ohms of resistance. So that's a basic overview of ghost voltage. So if you come across this effect, you'll understand why it happens and how to interpret the measurement results that you obtain. So thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please remember to give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe to this channel. There'll be many more videos coming up in the near future like this and all things electronics. So until next time, take care and goodbye for now.